David Bizard here, and you are watching Powertech 10. If you'd care to give me a few minutes of your time, I'll give you the benefit of nearly 60 years of race winning engine building. Well, we're up to episode 5 already, and we're still going to be focusing on losing weight. Now, I need you to remember two things here and it will explain the reasons why Andy and I and Uncle Tony are going to such great lengths to make this the ultimate motor at the end of the day for a Street 318 build. Now, you could say all of this lightning stuff isn't much use no, it contributes. Now, the thing is, let's say you won this. Would you rather win an engine that I had done everything I could humanly possible do? Or would you just like to win the same old engine that you've already got if you're already a Chrysler owner? No, I'm sure you'd want the one that's really done. And by the time it comes up for raffle, auction or whatever, it is going to be really done, but it's going to go through all of these phases first so that you can pick which one you want to do. I'm just covering every aspect I can think of here. Now, the other thing is, the more valuable the engine finishes up as, hopefully, the more money we will make for St. Jude's. If every one of my subscribers donated the price of a cup of coffee and a donut, once a month it would save the lives of probably hundreds of kids now i want you to think about that right especially as we've just started a new year here and did you make any new year's resolutions how about making one to saint jude's i resolve to help kids who are in need and thereby you will help my, now I've got a phrase for this, brain fade again, uh, grief relief. I want you to remember that for every kid that passes away because there wasn't the finances there to save that child, two parents go through grief, which unless you've lost a child, you will never understand. I've been there. Wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Anyway, on with the lightning. So back to the rods. I'm going to do a little more on the rods. And here we go. Now, you may be thinking that just cleaning up this little bit here is a bit on the... Hmm, too small a detail to consider. But actually, it's like the rod a little bit more than uh, you may be thinking, right? Anybody want to guess? Same deal goes. If you're the closest one to guess how much lightning this area on the rod has been. That's not the weight of the rod now. That's the amount that it's been lightened. We'll get a book. Your date to get your competition guess in will be March the 1st, and uh, it is the first person to get it right that gets the prize. Here's one, two sides done on a rod. Let's take a look and see how that's done. From here, you can see exactly the way I've reshaped the uh, bolt hole pads. And you'll notice that the thickness from here to the bolt hole on both of them is the same. This means that absolutely the minimal amount has come off here. So what I've done is all the part of the bolt platform that actually does something I've left. But that which is not really working for us that much, I've taken off. A lot of people said, what about this massive lump on the end here? Look at that. It's massive. We are going to address that now.
Okay, guys, I'm still on my lightning binge. Remember last edition of Mission Impossible? I talked about pushrod weights. Well, here's a stock pushrod. Here is a 60 wall pushrod, virtually the same length, with just a tad shorter, a few thousand shorter. And here's an 80 wall one. And our weights are 64 grams for the stock one, for the 80 wall thickness one, 53 grams, 11 grams lighter. And for the 60 wall one, 43 grams. Right, so here we are with an opportunity to cut the pushrod weight, if we use the 60 wall one, by no less than uh, 40, 43 to 64 just about this this one is just about two-thirds the weight of this one right gonna check the stiffness we'll do that in the next edition see what stiffness if any we are giving up the metallurgy of this Howard's 60 wall push rod is far better than the stainless steel that's used in this let me tell you something about stock push rods. They are designed to not transmit. They are, let's, let me rephrase that. They are designed to transmit minimal camshaft vibrations into the valve train. In other words, they act as a miniature damper, damping high frequency vibrations they are not the material that they're made of is intrinsically not as stiff in bending as 4340 now there's probably no heat treatment on these it's not this made of bad material but their goals were different but if we go to these Howard's push rods right what we find is is the heat treatment is such as to strike a good balance between stiffness and vibration absorption. So hopefully, if we put them with a good valve train, the push rod will actually be contributing just a tad to better power output. Okay, so much for push rod. That wasn't gonna be my intended goal here. That's where we started off, and a lot of people said, what are you going to do about that big lump on the big end? Well, here's a start. Now, I'm going to make this rod, this rod here, my master rod. So I'm going to deliberately lighten this one to what would be a little more than all the other rods, so that I can grind material off them to make them the same as this. Now, You'll see that this is still square here. Well, I'm going to round this off on this rod and check the weight. The thing is, I suspect that I can use the bit here to grind off to balance the rod. So my next move is I'm going to clean this up and radius that off, right? This is where we started. We just turn that rod around so that you can see it. Here's the cap that we've finished up with. Let me just stick it on a rod so that you can see the difference between the two. Here's the difference between the two. Now, which one looks like it's going to be faster? And I can tell you now, modifying the cap that way, we took a bunch of weight off these rods. First one to guess it right before March the 1st gets two books. I'll put your choices up on a video which we're going to do especially for the winners, right? And, uh, uh, I'll say which books they can have, etc., etc., or what they want signed in it, 
and so on. And we'll go from there. The next competition we're going to have may be for bigger prizes. I hope so. So how much extra power is all this rod lightning going to get? Well, actually just the rod lightning by itself under steady state conditions will give us zero torque and horsepower increase. However, we run our engines under accelerating conditions, right? Other than Bonneville, we're always on some kind of drag strip of various lengths and in various positions. The less weight the engine's internal parts have, or I should say the less mass, then the less power it takes to accelerate them. That means the power developed in the cylinders is used more to generate acceleration for your car instead of acceleration of the crankshaft, pistons, rods, etc. Right? But there's that domino effect that I keep referring to. This means that lightening the rods gives us another avenue to actually improve power. And that avenue is that for every gram we take off the rods, we can potentially take two, maybe even three grams off the counterbalance weight immediately associated with the that pair of rods so if we add the reduced mass of the crankshaft and the fact that we will windage it in the process this rod lightning here could be worth what we see it on the drag strip is something equivalent to between seven and ten horsepower that's not to be sneezed at and remember other than the grinding discs and emery rolls that we've used this has cost us nothing and we're fortunate in as much as the chrysler rod although it's made of uh the same material as the uh, chevy rod i think that's uh a 1018 steel um, it's not the strongest steel in the world in terms of tensile strength but it is tough when we're done with these rods we will have a set of rods which rival the weight of the Chevrolet rod, but are easily 50% stronger. Easily, maybe more than that. So that's where we're at there. That's our next move is now to look at how we're going to lighten the crankshaft. Now I haven't finished the rods. They've still got to be finished, cleaned up. Uh, on all the surfaces and then I'm going to tub tumble them in a fine media so that they're nice and smooth all over. I'm doing that really because I don't like to see untidy connecting rods, right? But we still have some moves to lighten them. I think when I give you the figure that we've lightened them by, you are going to be amazed. The people who will be most amazed or most impressed by it are those pro engine builders who are used to measuring rod weights and things like this or have some idea of how much a rod can be lightened by well this is one of those deals where it can be lightened by a bunch and we are going to make the best use of it well that's it for another edition of paratech 10. as far as uncle tony's mission impossible project goes we will be still looking at a few moves on the rods to get them even lighter and we will also be looking at how you can balance these at home i'll show you how that's done and um a couple of other things hopefully andy is going to be able to find time soon to get on with the carburetor right now he is busier than a one-armed paper hanger finishing off the 427 inch engine for his um casper truck right and i'm just waiting to see that truck go because I've got time invested in it as well I think with 703 horsepower in a even though it's a 4,500 pound truck it's got 700 horsepower and uh, almost 600 foot pounds of torque and I think it will run better in the 
truck than it will in the than it will on the dyno than it or it, than it did on the dyno simply because the headers are right for the truck and they weren't right for our dyno session anyway that remains to be seen now one final point here i do need you to subscribe i want to thank all those subscribers who've already subscribed remember this mission impossible deal is for saint jude's Well, that about does it for this edition of Paratech 10. Now, don't forget, we're doing this project. The Mission Impossible project for Uncle Tony is all for St. Jude's, right? The more you subscribe, the more you like, and the more you share, the more we will get for St. Jude's children. So please like, subscribe, and share, notify, ring the bell, whatever. We need you to help us help those kids. Thank you for watching.